Hi everybody, this is Natalie and today we are with Unicorn Properties. Talking with Miriam today, super excited because she's our right hand with anything that has to do with real estate transactions. Everything about legal, she's an attorney for so many years. You wanna share a little bit about you, your experience and Thank you, you know, so much. Where we are? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, well, I have 20 years expertise in corporate law, and um, eight years now uh, living in Riviera Maya. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, getting involved in real estate the, uh, law. Awesome. That's exciting because you know we understand that we are new in the country. So, as you know, as expats, it's very important to have the right team next to you and. Thanks for being with us, you know, every single step of the way with transactions. But do you wanna just, let's break some myths because people think that the Riviera Maya, um, it's, you know, you know, not people that are from other countries come by. So um, let's go with the first myth. Can people from another country purchase land or properties in the Riviera Maya or in Yucatan Peninsula? Yes, of course, they can buy, not directly, not as, owners as in other um, countries that has the common law. We have the civil law that um, is from Latin uh, type of laws like um, Italy and Spain. So the way that we uh, that a foreigner buys here in uh, um, in area that it's 50 kilometers through any border you buy as a beneficiary of a trust or a beneficiary of a company. But of course it's allowed. And also in the rest of Mexican territory that it's uh, not in this area of 50 kilometers, you can buy directly as an owner. Okay, um, there is this uh, trust process that is not considered a property tax and it's not considered a mortgage, but it's the commission, right? Yes. What is that for? We call it a trust because it's very similar. It's a contract by a bank and the bank has the administration of this property and um, you pay um, a fee, an annual fee, and it also works as a will. So it's similar to a will trust. So um, as in the same way that you are beneficiary, you can um, mention the beneficiaries when you pass. The, the trust um, is for the commission. How long does it last and how often does it need to be renewed if needed? The Mexican law allows 50 years, but it can be renewed. So uh, if you live longer than 50 <laughs> years from the time that you buy it, uh, you can uh, renew the the Also, if you decide to become, uh, to have the Mexican nationality, you can um, extend or terminate this trust okay. or this fideicomiso. So then if you're a foreign buyer, the process to go through this uh, purchase will be through the fideicomiso. If you're in 50 kilometers from the border. From any border, uh, land or um, sea. Okay, okay. And then um, that can be renewed every 50 years and or can be inherited to your exactly. kids. Yeah, say. exactly. And if you become a resident? Not a resident. A, a citizen. A citizen, exactly. Okay, so residence is just to have more time in the country. Exactly. A citizen to have more rights with yeah. the land. But for example, in the case that you decide to make businesses and uh, you decide for not uh, executing a fideicomiso, you can do it by a company and the company has uh, no limit of time and um, also you can purchase that way. So let's talk a little bit about the purchase process. Um, now that we know that the buyers, uh, you know, an international buyer can proceed with a purchase, what would be the steps that they need to be aware of, uh, maybe from the beginning, so they know what to expect? Well, we have two choices to buy. One is when you find a property that is on pre-sale, when it's not built already, and the other is like already. So in both cases, you have to wait at least one month. So if you're very interested, you can like sign a letter of intention and you must have a little time to do research mm -hmm. over the property so that you can know that the person that is selling you, it's really the owner at the public registry and 
what, what, what state legally is the property. Okay. So in the other case of pre-sale, you have to do a better research because you will be giving installments during some uh, time that perhaps is more than one year. And also they are committed to deliver in some period and you can have more risk than if you see already the property mm -hmm. built. So uh, in, in Quintana Roo, we don't have, um, re the public registry don't have uh, the um, consults by, e by the, internet. The online portal the is online. not there. Exactly, and we still don't have it. But in Yucatan, in Merida, they have like, they can do the research online. Mm -hmm. So that would be like putting the PIN number of the property, which is the, the number cadastral, catastral, yeah. catastral number. Mm -hmm. And they can search who's you know, exactly. prior owners and if there is any exactly. more than it's one owner. It's not a very um, extent uh, research, report. but you can know who's the, the owner or what things uh, are uh, registered in that property. Awesome, this is very helpful. Yeah. Um, so once we go through the process of the promissor promissory letter, right? Then yeah, the promissory letter or the promissory contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when do you think is a good time to engage an attorney to work with you in the process? Well, since you are like um, interested in a property in, since the very beginning, because um, the people that it's selling with um, motivation and can tell you or, or omit some things that perhaps for you is very important. For example, if there's a credit that they have to pay, that usually the constructors um, well have credits to build, but sometimes they're not paying um, fully or your property is not on the periods of, of the payments. So that things are very important for you to make your title. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you can receive it, you can use it, but it's very important that you get your title, that you're the beneficiary. Yeah, so then if, let's say the developer um, has a loan on, on the property or a lien, let's say, for that property, they, can, they won't be able to do a title for you unless it's clear. Exactly. Okay, so you have to be super careful with that because if they have still debt on the property on the, or on the land, they'll, they, you won't be able to issue a title. Or sometimes, they are associated with uh, people with the land of the people that it's constructing and they have to ask permissions or to give some letters. There, there's processes, okay. legal processes that might um, have obstacles on your process of title. Thank you for that. Let's go over the process on, okay, I love a property. I want to buy it, it's in pre-sale. Uh, so I will have to talk to you right from the beginning, right? Like what would be the steps to follow uh, until we sign the contract and have my title? Yeah, the best thing that you can do is um, to get close to a lawyer um, right from the beginning because you can make a research from the property and uh, stop from having some uh, risks. Then the um, second thing is that you can sign a, either a um, promissory letter or a promissory contract uh, which has some clauses or terms and conditions that perhaps for you in the language is common to read, but um, you're not very aware about the words that in the Mexican law then can mean something different mm -hmm. or can mean something in benefit of one or the other part mm -hmm. you know, or for risk. Usually yourself. it will be the developers. Part, right? Usually, <laughs> the developer of... is um, trying to avoid some uh, risks the, or mitigations. Yeah. Okay, duties. So uh, then you have some um, payments, some installments in pre-sale. Well, you can be doing for a whole year, for example. And in that period, the developer can have some delays, can have some uh, out of money or some. Mm -hmm. uh, issues in the middle that you don't know because you receive newsletters or you um, are very... you uh, trusting. Yeah. yeah. Trustful. So in that, uh, in all that time, perhaps the lawyer is not um, very in the process of construction, but can also be uh, anticipating the periods that are stated on the contract. Mm 
So mm -hmm. if you have a lawyer since the beginning, uh, the lawyer knows which steps on the contract are, uh, are next. next. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is that your final payment is at the title um, date, at okay. the date that you title, so that they can have everything settled so that you can have your title at least 10% or uh, so that you don't pay in full when usually it's when for you to receive the property but then some legal documents are not ready so if it's possible the developers are um, sometimes not very willing to do that because um, they let you get in the property when when you pay in full but if it's possible to have just um, some amount for the the end for title and and that's where you need more a lawyer because if that date comes and you don't have the or the constructions or the papers to title well uh, you will have the lawyer to negotiate because it's always better to have uh, negotiate some penalties than to go and sue because the trials um, here for uh, international Bias. peace, yeah. It's it takes forever, <laughs> most likely. Yes. Yeah, because it's very, I mean, we had clients that um, the developer asked them for the final payment when they get the keys. But the keys, getting the keys doesn't mean that they get the title yet. Exactly. And then usually it's about how long from, I mean, it depends on the developer, but Yes, it's the most about important a year. part that you get the possession and that you can get in your property and that you can use it or rent it or do whatever you like but if without the papers you cannot do um, more other things like mm -hmm. if you want to resell it let's say you can't exactly. right away so even people want to buy it and flip it right away they need to wait for that title to be finished exactly. and you recommend to have a little tiny payment at least towards the end when they give you your actual title which can be up to a year after you close close meaning you get the keys but here closing will be so I think closing is not what you think in the US, that you get your keys and you sign, and there goes your title. Here you can get your keys, but the title will take about a year, and that's when you it need depends. the most. There's a lot of developers that uh, build a lot, that they have everything by the time that you get the keys. Perfect. Oh, but, that's awesome. Yes, but um, as a rule, as much more luxury is the, um, the building, you can have more delays in the title. Oh, really? Perhaps not in construction. Yeah, it's not a written rule, but it's usual. As more um, uh, exclusive or, or luxury, they can have um, delays on the papers. Okay. Yeah, because I think we had one client that waited about a year to get her paperwork. Sometimes a year Perhaps and a half is the worst case scenario. Okay. It can happen, and but that's normal, also, right? Or, or it can be like. Also, we, we have to say that we have um, the municipality administrations here are only for four years. So if a construction start in one administration and then the all the system change of party or like a whole pol new politics. Yes. Oh, so okay. it has happened that they delay a lot because there's things that are not in the control of the developer. Okay, so it can be also based on the city and the paperwork exactly. that is, as they're changing exactly. administrations. Okay, that's very important to know. Um, perfect, so now that we have all the steps, what will be some of the risks you recommend to keep in mind for international buyers? Like they need to just pay attention to because, you know, some people are like, oh, I love this place, you know, the pictures look nice, the renders are amazing. I want a property there, but what are some things that they have to like, wait a minute, think about, and you know, not rush yeah. into something that might cause them a little trouble later. Perhaps I will say not only in the legal aspects, but it uh, has happened to me that a lot of people think that they are coming to um, location or an area, to a jungle, and they will have the same amenities than in a big city. Yeah. And that's not a legal part, but um, I recommend that you live like for a month at least so that you can really know the weather and that we are coming into the jungle and to respect the environment, to respect the nature. And sometimes we don't have like the um, sanitary installations like, like in other cities in other countries. 
so we have to uh, be aware of that and in the um, in the legal part the risks we don't have produ the production here of the uh, raw materials for construction so we depend on the suppliers on the transportation on all these materials that sometimes they're offering you the constructor may want to bring some material from other parts and then like granite or like exactly. marble kind that of it's not produced here well anything well um, maybe some of them are close but we have that um, risk about the timing and um, sometimes the land belongs to um, a lot of people there's also one topic that it's very common we have this community law in all Mexico but mostly in areas that has a lot of jungle and nature that um, uh, are protecting the communities of origin and sometimes they cannot sell land uh, very easily they have to request some permissions from the same big community is that so, what they call ejidal exactly okay it's called ejido. ejido and the ejido it's a big community of a lot of acres and to be able to um, get out of the ejido some part of that land you have to well the, the same community has to give permissions and to do some paperwork and sometimes the um, constructor believes that during the process of construction they can do that paperwork but it can also be a risk um, so only in time because it will be able to be delivered or to be entitled but it will take a little longer Sometimes. so that's why the reason why it's very important since the very beginning you have a clear um, map picture. of yeah picture of how the land is and if you're aware and you decide to go for it it's different than if they're hiding things. Yeah, so the, the ejido is so, something very important, I think, that you mentioned, between the difference between ejido and private property. Exactly. So usually for international buyers, you cannot buy ejido like right away. Not even for nationals. Okay, okay. You can, you There's have a process to, be to follow. You part of the ejido community, even for Mexican citizens to buy there. in, in Ejido. So, so it has to be first a, a property and then... So Ejido, there's a process and um, everybody has to agree to sell that piece, make it private property and exactly. only then can be purchased by somebody else. Exactly. So you be aware of the prices because there is a lot of, you know, for sale signs everywhere, you know, you'll see like for land, for properties, but that might be uh, an Ejido and that's a community owned piece of land that even if you wanted to, you cannot purchase because a lot of people have to agree exactly. to make sure that it yeah. goes through. Okay, awesome. And another risk, but it's maybe the first risk that you might have, it's fraud. There's um, a lot of people that want to build and they are selling, but they don't have any document to make them um, able. able or with legal power to, to sell. Yeah. So it's kind of marketing companies that will sell something that might not be theirs exactly. or they haven't verified all the facts. Yeah, so the, or the contract is done between people that has no representation from the owners and then, well, the owners will not uh, yeah. give any permission. Yes. So that's maybe some kinds of, of fraud that could happen or um, they are not getting the, um, the um, credit that they're asking for mm -hmm. or they, uh, they are not getting the license uh, at the beginning in a pre-sale perhaps they don't even have the license to build and it can be a risk of, of fraud yeah. so it's very important to get this research and also to have that causes in the contract yeah i think that's super important and i think i think the reason that there's more of the risk is that uh, at least in Mexico, is not re agents are not required a license to be agents. So that kind of implies a little bit of the risk for buyers if they don't check their agents. They have like uh, courses and license, but most of the um, developers, so that 
they can sell more. They don't request the license mm -hmm. that, because it's not in the law that they must have. So you can find a lot of agents with license, but they're not requested to pay a commission by the developers. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important also that you have um, an agent that knows the market. And I suggest that to have a lawyer that it's not um, with, yeah. Yeah, with the agent because sometimes they can be making businesses together yeah, so, so if like, they oh, can yeah, hide nah, don't tell this but if you can find a reliable um, attorney besides or a lawyer besides the agent they can both um, you can compare and contrast you know your different versions that will think of exactly, the same exactly what they both say awesome appreciate it well thank you so much Miriam it was awesome to get Great. some knowledge on legal status and you know Mexico especially the Riviera Maya that is so popular and attracts so many people year over year and hopefully this helps everybody out there on you know doing the research beforehand. If you have any questions, they can reach out to you directly. Of course, of course. Okay. Thank you so much for <laughs> trusting. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, so if you have any questions, you'll find all the information from Miriam in the description below, and you can ask any questions directly to her. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.